Steve Cooper ranks success and uh, this is a video as I alluded to in my previous video around evidence structures uh, about the structure for presenting your evidence uh, that's called enamel. Now enamel is just a mnemonic for a model uh, of response uh, to get across, to communicate and to deliver the evidence that you've got in an interview. So if you get asked questions, and sometimes this helps both for rear-facing questions, so tell us what uh, an example of what you have done, as well as give us an example of what you would do, or how would you, or how will you, examples called forward-facing questions. The whole idea really is to spend some time thinking through what your conversational responses might look like to that, because I always encourage um, candidates to think about responding to um, interview questions as opposed to answering them. So of course you need to answer the question that's given, but you've got five, six, sometimes seven minutes to do that. So it can sometimes feel like a really lonely place to be if A, you haven't done any work to prepare any um, options for interview responses. Uh, when the board finish asking the questions, when the board member finish asking the questions, which probably lasts you know, 30 seconds at the most, um, you've then got quite a long time, quite a big space to fill conversationally. So particularly if you're going for um, an inspector level, uh, a chief inspector level, some of the questions, some of your responses might need to take a little bit longer because the board want to get a snapshot of you. If you think about it in iceberg terms, generally you, you can only see about a seventh of an iceberg. Uh, the substance of it um, is underneath. And the board definitely want to get to know a little bit about the substance uh, of, of you and to see some of that. So the questions will be posed accordingly. And to have a model or of, of um, whatever, uh, whatever suits you, whatever you think is helpful to you, it helps have done the work beforehand to do that. So enamel is just one that I'm going to talk through now. And people, uh, this has stemmed from conversations I've had with individuals who have said you know either a previous unsuccessful experience or um, uh, as a result of their experiences in interviews they asked me a question and I knew I just went off rambling rambling I just knew I had to kind of fill that vacuum as soon as they'd finished asking me the question so the E in enamel uh, stands for easy tiger whoa whoa just because you've been asked a question doesn't mean to say that you need to fill that vacuum and ram an answer down the throats of each board member straight away. It's not a starting gun that they fired. They wanna see how you think, how you reflect. So just easy, just buy yourself that little bit, that pregnant pause before you answer. You know, thank them for the question. Say that's a really, really interesting question. Thank you very much. I'd just like to think about that if I could do for a minute, because there's a couple of points in it. So just the E just stands in, for just, just manage it. Manage that initial um, awkward silence after the question. There's no need to rush in, even if you're confident about asking the question. So the E really stands for easy tiger. So that's more a bit of a guidance than a part of a model, but it's something that just helps you think, I do not need to rush into answering the question just because they've finished uh, speaking to me. Okay, uh, the next uh, letter N, stands for um, nationally so it just prompts you to think about what's the big picture what's happening nationally in relation to what it is you've just been asked so you've just been asked a question give the national picture or start thinking about the national picture the wider picture now at inspector level and chief inspector level allows you to bring in uh, strategic um, uh, big picture stuff so we'll look nationally in policing at the moment this is happening um, regionally that's important because and force wide uh, that is affecting us in these ways and these are the things I believe I can contribute to you might even want to talk about what's going on locally and you can zoom between those two things so locally if we do this right uh, regionally it'll interact it'll interject here and nationally we're working towards the, the strategy so it's just a second point of managing a conversation it's to enable you to think through well, I'm going to start with the big picture and then I'm going to go in uh, through down through regionally through to locally. And that just allows you to kind of cover a broad range of um, 
scope, if you like, in relation to the question they've just asked you. Um, the A alphabet is uh, as an inspector, as a sergeant, as an inspector, as a chief inspector, my role links to that here. So as an inspector, you know, developing and implementing plans, um, identifying and managing operational threats and risks, um, reconnecting people with the mission, vision and values uh, of, of the organisation, uh, decision making, you name it, whatever the role functions are, and of course you need to do the work beforehand to know what they are, you can start talking about as an inspector, as a chief inspector, these are the things where I believe that question links to the role functions that I'll be um, carrying out. Okay, so that just helps you link a response to the role functions and dimensions of the role that you're going for. Um, the M uh, stands for um, your own thoughts. My own thoughts about that are, and often people, um, often people won't, that they fight shy of introducing what they think about things. So there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with you sharing your thoughts. So well, look, I know the force is doing this uh, in this area. At a personal level, my own thoughts are I don't believe we're getting it right there. Uh, we're getting it wrong for these reasons. And I believe that a potential response to put that right or to do it a different way is this. Now, once I accept that we're going through A, B, C and E stages, I would like to, as a chief inspector or as an inspector, I would like to have an influence around A, B, C, D and E. So my own thoughts are, in short, we don't get it right. Um, I believe there are uh, the scope for other, other ways of doing that. Uh, and here's what I think about it. Okay, the E bit is your evidence. Of course, you've got to answer the question. So what you've been doing while you've been managing your conversation there is to think about, well, look, as soon as they asked me the question and I was easy tiger at the beginning, I knew what I was going to say about my answer. So here's an example of when I've actually done that. So then you'll use and build in a structure that you're comfortable with to cover that evidence. So we've gone wide at the beginning with some conversational management. We're coming in tight now to answer the question. Problem, action, result, or um, situation, objective, action, result, or situation, task, action, result. Okay, so you actually answer the question that's been asked. Here is the problem that I dealt with, or here is an example of the problem that I'm dealing with, or what you're saying to me is a problem in relation to policing. Here are the actions I took, or here are the actions that I would take in that situation, it's forward facing, and here is the result or the outcome that I achieved, or here is the result or the outcome that I would be looking to achieve, what good looks like if that went correctly, if that played out uh, in the way that I expect it to. Um, and the last element of enamel is uh, the L is for learning. What did you learn as a result of that experience? What was the individual or the team or the organisational learning that came out of your experience or your response? Often it's an area that's forgotten, but learning is important um, and that covers individual team and organisational learning. The NDM allows you to do that at stage five of the NDM. It's often overlooked, but stage five is take action and review. And from the review and debriefs, you can identify individual team and organisational learning. You can work out what went right, what went wrong, or what didn't go right as right as it should have done. What would we do differently next time and why? And what are we going to put in place to do that? How are you actually going to share that learning? So it's basically just a conversational management mnemonic. Now you can find it in my, in my blogs, I think you can find it, in, definitely find it in my digital guides. Um, it's just a suggestion, but I know it works well. I've had some really good feedback on it. Enamel, you don't have to use every element of it, but it just helps as a structure. Now it helps as a structure if you've done this thinking beforehand, far before an interview, and you've had a chance to practice and rehearse some of your responses. Now, some forces will guide you uh, and offer um, guidance that you don't need to practice or rehearse. Um, th that's a matter for you, whether you do that or not. I would always encourage candidates, and I always do encourage candidates, to rehearse and practice and practice and rehearse 
over and over and over again repetition 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 is a great way of learning as is practicing as is sitting back on that and reflecting how did i start doing that and how am i better now so if you think about if you're doing uh, structures for evidence written evidence if it was a wedding speech or a father of the bride speech um, you certainly wouldn't deliver your first version to people generally there's three four five different versions of it uh, as you draft it and redraft it and reshape it and all of that incrementally builds your confidence whether that's to sit in an interview and answer questions uh, or to put your application in uh, and sit back and wait it's all about confidence so you take the approach that, that works for you but this this examples around enamel uh, it's just one tool it's one option for you um, it's one that I've had feedback on and you'll see on my site testimonials works really well for people that have had a chance to prepare so together with the previous video I did and this one on enamel around interview structures you've now got some options early in 2021 to kind of think through to reflect and to work with and to really start shaping and crafting and rewording and rephrasing your evidence in a way that actually encourages you uh, to feel confident that you'll be able to deliver it whether that's in writing or whether that's verbally now as i've said before you can download the digital toolkit and you can get straight on with things um, these videos hopefully you can you can rewind them and have a listen to them and say what was it you said about this again uh, but feel free download the digital guides if you want to i'm going to be showing this on every video i do this year rs guides 20 will get you 20 percent off uh, any individual guide or the bundles and uh, I wish you all the best uh, if you're starting out and if you're not if you're just looking at these kind of videos I hope I'm giving you lots of food for thought some aha moments and some light bulb moments around how you can start working with your own evidence uh, I'll be doing some more videos shortly and I look forward to uh, speaking to you then thank you